Okay, so in order to get all of this dictionary or all of these values that we are receiving from our JSON input into our model, the first thing we need is actually to have a model. So let's go ahead and create a model. We will call that model customer because it looks like this data is more of a representation of a customer. And now we can actually go ahead and create the first name as string, so different properties that we need to map. So last name, last name and age and so on. All right. Now, it's a good idea at this point to create a initializer or a custom initializer that can take in a dictionary. All right. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I'm going to create a custom initializer dictionary and it will take in a string and any. Now you might be wondering, okay, hold on a second. If you're even creating a custom initializer, why can't I just create this particular initializer? So let me actually do that. Copy this inside the structure over here. I mean, why am I creating an extension? The reason that I am creating an extension and then adding the initializer in the extension is that if you put a custom initializer like this or any other inside the structure, it will override the default initializer for the customer. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. Right now, if you go and create a customer, so if I go ahead and create a customer equals to customer, see that? The first one, the first line that is highlighted, uh, it's taking in the first name, the last name, and the age. Now, I never wrote that. I never created this initializer, but Swift language by default creates the initializer which satisfies all of these uh, properties that we have declared. All right, so that we get it for free. Now, if I have another initializer over here, let's say, I don't know, dog name. All right, and I will have to go ahead and set something to over here. So self.lastName equals to something, and then self.age, I'm just, just checking out these values through whatever. So now if I go over here and I will create the same customer again, hmm, see something different? Where's our initializer that was taking three arguments? The first name, last name, and the age. It's gone. It has been replaced by the new initializer that we have created. And uh, most probably you don't really want to do that. I mean, if you're getting something for free, uh, I would say you keep it. And in order to keep it, what we can do is we can simply create an extension. And when we are declaring an initializer, a custom initializer, we declare it inside the extension. All right. And now over here, we can actually check for these values. So I'm going to use guard let uh, first name, and I'm going to get the first name over here using the first name as string. Let's go ahead and say next one is what? Last name. We are going to get the last name from this as string. And finally, it is the age, which is the dictionary of age as int. And if everything fails, um, well, you can re then return nil. Uh, we have to make sure that the Initializer can return nil to line number 16 after init. You can actually put the question mark saying that it can return nil. And finally, don't forget to set these values up or else it won't even compile. And last name and self.age equals to age. And that should be it. So we have created a custom initializer for our customer object or a customer class or customer, sorry, structure which can take a dictionary and using the dictionary, it can extract the values out and initialize itself. So let's see how we can actually use that. So if I go over here and if I want to create a custom initializer, so you can see that we got the dictionary. And if I do want to create that particular object, I can say let customer equals to customer. And guess what? The customer takes in a dictionary. So let's go ahead and pass in the dictionary. Now it can return nil because if one of these keys are missing, which is first name, last name, or age is missing, it will return nil. And that is specified 
right over here, right here with a question mark. And there we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and print out the customer and see if it has populated our object or not. And you can see that customer has been populated. Customer first name is John, last name is Doe, and age is 34. So this is how you will populate your customer class or customer structure object using the JSON serialization. It's a little bit of a work. I mean, you have to write this code manually and manually map first name to first name, last name to last name, age to age. It's kind of also good because now you're kind of in the control of mapping these things, like first name is mapped to first name. I mean, if it was like F name, then it was, you can do that over here, all right? Um, so this is kind of like the old way of doing things using JSON serialization class and uh, creating a custom initializer, all right, using JSON serialization. And you can map like nested objects also. The only problem or the only thing you have to make sure is that you are, you know, you are mapping it correctly, all right? So now you know how to map a single item. How about if we were getting an array of different customers? How would you do that using the JSON serialization class.